Thank you so much to be invited here in order to present my fields of research. And I like to give you a survey about the history of development of the understanding of water in Western culture and also compared to the standpoint in Chinese culture, in Chinese culture of imperial China, of course. And so we will uh, yeah, see where are the similarities, where are the contradictions, and where are the differences. Yeah. Firstly, what combines all cultures yeah, in order to esteem water? We know the poet Pindar, who wrote the old Olympia, very famous Greece, lived in the 5th century BC. He says, in all good things of nature, nothing is better than water. It brings and sustains life. I, sh I think we, we agree. And uh, the same we can hear about at the same epoch of the famous book Lao Tse in the Tao Te Ching, the Tao and, and its virtue. He says, Shang Shan Ro Shui Shui Shan Li Wan Wu, highest, <laughs> highest God, highest good is like water. Water benefits the myriad things of the world. So we see that the, the beginning of all water uh, understandings yeah, is somehow the same. Here we see a, a short, a short survey about what happened in the Western world. Uh, I divided the epoch pre-Mendeleev and post-Mendeleev, but we have to know a lot of pre and post concerning water. Yeah, we have pre-poly water, post-poly water. Yeah, we have pre-Benveniste, post-Benveniste. And now we are at the stage of EC soon, and we are still the fishes in the water. So I don't know if we are the current fishes in the water. So I only like to mention that, and probably you know it better than me, because you belong to this movement. So on the other side, the pre-situation was firstly Jewish Christian tradition about living water, Greece understanding what is called in Latin language, materia prima, water as the source of all life. Then later in the medieval ages, Paracelsus, the genius or spirit of water. And then we, uh, I discovered some early beginnings of analytical water research by, for example, Johan Dryanda or the beginning of all water cures by the family Hahn and not least, last not least, the beginning of water business, because this is a really big factor in economy. So we will see later that we are not, we don't, didn't, we didn't invent the water business in the 20th century. Friedrich Hoffmann, for example, or the European mineral water did this long, long before our times. In Chinese culture, we have to attach the discussion of water to the concept of qi. In pre-Han times, this is somehow uh, 20, uh, second, 21st BC, yeah? animism, creativity of five system, five phases system, water regulation, early landscaping by feng shui, water plays a big role in the understanding of nature, but water was more or less an expression of qi this is a life force concept. I will explain it later in the world. So, Han times created something which is called Huang Lao Taoism. This is a combination between Confucianism and Taoism. What creates all patterns to explain the world and what we also still are knowing and using probably in Chinese, uh, traditional Chinese medicine. So, in post hunt also, post hunt this means uh, second century until 10th century after death, uh, shows us a development of Taoist longevity techniques where water also plays a role. 
an important agent which is sustaining life, but more in a technical way. Zong time, so this is 960 to 1200, is a very important epoch in Chinese traditional science because they are very, very close to our understanding of nature. They had a pre-verb pre called investigating the objects, ko. This means they are very close to statistical values, yeah? And they uh, discovered the magnetism. They have some paradigms like emptiness and chi and structure and chi, which are very modern, I would say. And in Ming time, it is replaced by the idealistic neo-Confucianism. This is the same thing, but more mental. So here in said world, in said life conception, we know something which is uh, yeah, later known as Chan Buddhism or Zen Buddhism in Japan. And during Qing time, Chinese culture starts to assimilate Western discoveries uh, and to project these discoveries into the Chinese worldview concepts. General accepted attributes of water, you all know it. Water is the origin of all creations. Water is everywhere. Water is energy. Water is climate. Water is living space. Water is edible and natural stimulant. Water is a remedy. And how we already know at this Congress, water is not even water. In Chinese worldview, we have a little different meaning about Water is following causes. Water spontaneously flows downward, unlike fire, which is uh, spontaneously goes upward. Water is a carrier, for example, detritus or informations. Water is soft, yielding, and uncontending. Water takes any shape. Still waters, for example, becomes level, level a very, very uh, important discovery <laughs> somehow for Chinese because still water clears itself of sediments and becomes reflective, which is a an, an guideline for Chinese Taoists practitioners for meditation to calm down and get rid of all internal shakings. Water is mirroring something. Water is difficult to see because it's transparent. Intelligence and knowledge traditionally are related to water. Water is the yin version in nature, while fire is the yang version. And water is presenting change, while mountains are presenting continuity. Words for water in different languages. Here uh, we know water in English, German, Wasser, Islandic, Wadden, Celtic, Scottish, Irish, Weske. This sounds very similar to whiskey. Yeah? Yeah? Pro probably they thought this is water. Yeah? Russian, Wada. Polish, Wada. Baltic, Wandor. Sanskrit, Vatura. So you see the indo germanic string yeah, of that word from India to our areas. In Latin, Aqua, O, Azas, Greece, Nero, Hebrew, Maim. Turkish Su Apache, Apache T. Hindu Jal. Chinese, which uh, in our focus of interest later is Shui, and Japanese Misu. Hebrew Christian tradition developed the idea, of course, that water is a materia prima. And here you know all this, the second sentence in the Bible, and the Spirit of God was hovering over, water, over the face of the waters. Here, life is a product created by spirit in water, and the living body seems to be spirit in water too. Hebrew Christian tradition have a speciality known as the so-called living water. The living water is a is a verb now very up to date also in mineral industry. Yeah, so nobody knows really. That is a yeah, it's a borrowed, said 
marketing concept from early, from early ideas out of the uh, Jewish Torah. The wellspring of the living water is the source of life. It creates physical health and mental health. Jewish mikveh tradition, for example, and now you see here such a bath with seven steps is a kind of ritual, yeah, which re is concerned to fresh water out of the earth. Living water is not collected water, yeah, and we will see it leads to, uh, to Christian baptism. Yeah? Also, Islamic tradition shows us a very related ideas about water. You see the Kaaba is very close to a sacred spring of water. Water in Western culture, water is the principle of all things, says Talus Omelides, Lazio says, the beginning of all is water, the cosmos is animated and full of gods. Aristoteles was more analytic, the quality of water depends on the earth through which it is moving. Yeah? And Heraclitus of Ephesus says, it means death to the souls when they become water. So water is the substance of all souls. And what, if water disappears, he, means, he meant that water will uh, go back or return into earth. God of medicine, Asclepius, was praised, said after above, in ice cold water, the red blooming skin is a phenomena for becoming healthy, and we will see that uh, the Greeks have, and also the Romans, have a full developed medical bath tradition. Yeah? And we will find first more uh, definition of different kind of waters. Water is not water. Yeah? In Celsus and Plinus the Older, the second, the second wrote more medical ideas about water and last not least we are not sure that water is a unique agent we can say it was also trapped in the four elements world conception and um, was an agent beside fire air and earth the humoral pathology you will see water is expressed here by that uh, Person. This is a picture, a painting of Lukas Kranach, and you say the attributes of water are cold and humid, phlegm, slime, phlegmatic, uh, languorous, this means sluggish, it is related to the brain, even tempered, the mental version, uh, the mental expression is even tempered, not excitable, and is pneuma unlike. The idea of the uh, yeah, fountain of youth seems to be somehow a reflection to the Hebrew Christian idea of living water. Yeah. In medieval times, Hildegard von Bingen, which is a very famous symbol for emancipation now, uh, well, was very attracted by water and jewels are produced by fire and water, therefore containing them. And we also should uh, mention Paracelsus, Terfrostus Bombastus of Hohenheim, this was his real name. He says, and this is a very Greece like idea, all minerals are born in the element water and after becoming fully matured are returning into water. Uh, he discovered the genius in water or the spirit in water called also the Acheus. Johann Dorander is the first person who started analytical water analyzes uh, somehow, um, he destillate water and investigated the substances which remain after destillation. Uh, Johann Gottfried Hahn and Johann Sigmund Hahn are the first known water healers in Europe. Uh, and here we have a very interesting phenomenon. All people start using water for healing sooner or later get a conflict with law. <laughs> Very interesting, because here in this, uh, uh, here in this epoch uh, of uh, Johann Hahn and Sigmund Hahn, all, um, yeah, all owner of inns and, and uh, bars <laughs> in that time were very embarrassed, said water, said people are starting to drink water instead of of continuing drinking beer. 
and they accuse them, yeah, that they damage the economical basement, yeah, of the community. Friedrich Hoffmann is the most interesting person for economics. He invented a product called Hoffmann drops. This means he distillated the water and put the remaining substances in alcohol and salted. The Hoffmann drops are the most successful is are the most successful product in the European culture. It is still sold 300 years. It is on the market. <laughs> so, I think Friedrich Hoffmann showed us how to use water in a, uh, yeah, in a social healthy way. Yeah. Uh, very famous also Vincent Priestnitz, a very, very early water healer, and uh, Ferdinand Oertel. They all get trouble with law because of using water for healing. Yeah. The first was, was uh, accused to practice witchcraft. The second one uh, was uh, <laughs> sentenced uh, to abused medical knowledge because he is not, he was only a farmer and not a, a physician. And the interesting case is Samuel Hahnemann. Samuel Hahnemann uh, is very related now to the memory of water, but I checked the whole literature. He has a different, he has a different meaning about water, so it seems that the idea of the homeopathic idea of memory of water inside water, yeah, is not an idea of Samuel Hahnemann. For him, water is a diluting agent, it's paralyzing effect, it is freeing the active ingredient for material contamination. He wrote, it is undressing the effect from materia, and the active ingredient is volatile. The pop star of all water healers, of course, is Sebastian Kneip. He suffered a tuberculosis, and he gets somehow a book of the Hahn family I mentioned before, and healed himself by the water cure. He also get problems with the justice because he was using water. Yeah? And the Bavarian government said this is a danger for the society because the, the Bavarian soul, the Bavarian mentality is based on beer and brandwein. What, what, what means spirits? Yeah? And this is a subversive movement in society only to drink water. We know Victor Schauberger, he has an ecological approach to water. I do not like to describe it very long because I like to step into the Chinese world. Here you see a graph, a diagram about uh, the water industry starting already very early in the 18th century. Water business was growing and growing and it was only interrupted by war. Here you have French Revolution, some independence war, so you see like the curve is shrinking every time when there are some uh, yeah, hostile activity in society. Okay, also there are again polywater, memory of water by Ben Benistat. It is to mention Mark and Vogel speculated about the transfer of store information in fluid crystals and Rasta Moroi discovered molecular structures of different size and quality in water. The Chinese relationship to water is very close. Here you see the Chinese characters, the old version, how it's written now, and this small graph here is an indicator that the Chinese characters is related to water somehow. Uh, water is a standard, says the Shuowen Jiezi, a very early classic about the history and development of Chinese characters. Water is related to qi, I said already. Qi is a life force complex with multiple meanings concerned to different fields of knowledge. And the character here you see shows us curling vapors rising from the ground and forming clouds above. This is very, very related to water. So we have to distinguish somehow also in Chinese culture that water is an expression of the life force qi in nature. 
So this is a dictionary for the emperor Chenlo, uh, the Kangxi Zidian. This is for the emperor Kangxi for his lonely hours when he liked to investigate Chinese characters. And you, so you see, this is the water, and you see the small left part here also. All these characters are related to water. This, uh, this dictionary has 560 entries only of characters related to water. And before the section of water starts, we have the section of the life force, Qi. Uh, in the Jinting Gujin Tushu teachings, this is a very famous encyclopedia uh, for, for the Qianlong Emperor, the water is somehow classified in environmental divination, in pools and swamps as a technical knowledge of special abilities um, section, and as a strange phenomena of water in numerous phenomena, but I tell you, it is completely not investigated. Yeah? So this is a material we can get, but we do not know the content because no nobody had asked the question about water in Chinese culture before in that way. While Western culture was more attracted by how to use water in order to improve the soul, for example, in the concept of living water, Chinese culture was more attracted by controlling the water because of the massive flutes they sometimes experienced. And the great Yu, this is a mystic uh, uh, emperor, the great Yu is famous that he controls the waters, and this was his cultural contribution, what makes him so famous in Chinese, the Chinese world. Here, oh, what happened here? All Chinese scientific arrangements are based on the concept of qi, on the idea of yin and yang and the five phases. With this three concepts, every phenomena in the world should be explained. Very early, water and fire, this is the Shunze, is the third century before uh, uh, birth, water and fire are some expression of qi, in nature is very similar also to the humoral pathology, and then you see the hierarchy of uh, natural existence like plants, animals, and humans. They uh, uh, have an adding, is there something more than um, water and fire, and this makes the thing very complicated. Uh, Confucianism, we only know one sentence in the Lun Yu. This is water, o oh water. And this is a pattern of right morality uh, because raining water, for example, is a pattern for a stolen reputation and water coming out of a dwell from the earth, like living water, is a pattern for a solid and uh, uh, yeah, uh, serious reputation of a gentleman. In Taoism, we know high school is like water, but there is also the distinction of clear water and turbid water. Of course, turbid and muddied water are bad, and a clear water is a symbol for a very intelligent person. Nothing in the world is more weak and soft than water, yet nothing surpasses it in conquering the heart of the strong. There is nothing that can compare. A very famous sentence out of the Tao Te Ching. Now, charges, negative charges on earth, <laughs> we learned yesterday, or day before yesterday, and positive charges on the sky is somehow realized in Chinese world conception of the three entities. So, we also have a conception of yang water. Yang water is all water which is flowing down, and yin water, yin water is all water which is rising somehow also in plants. Here you see the five element system. Water is related to the black color. It represents all cognitive aspects and the will and the kidneys, and this is very related every time to fire. North, winter, coldness, storage, black kidneys, bladder, ear, bones, teeth, fear, moaning, putrid, sweet. These are all attributes and associations of water. Water has a relationship to fire. 
And so now you see something very important. Shui hao er yi. This means water is good to one. This is somehow uh, mentioning the assembling nature of water while flowing downwards. But fire is different. It is called huo huai yi er. Fire is bad, one, two. And this is a symbol for, disaggregate, for the disaggregating nature of the fire. We have a very intrinsic relationship between fire and water. So when fire is somehow um, supporting the water, so the water will have his natural expression to flu and to be clear. But if fire is located over the water, so the water will become frozen and will lose its natural expression for Chinese. Substance and function, okay. Substance and function is a paradigm which is very interesting for all people who are investigating the uh, vibrations and informations of vibrations in water. Because water is the substance, the Taoist says, and the waves of the water are its function. This is vice versa to Buddhism, which are telling us who are telling us the wind is the reason and the waves of water are its effect. The Taoist is the Chinese. Buddhism isn't Chinese. The Taoist said, no, it has to be the same thing. Water is the substance and the vibrations or the waves are its functions. Here you see a graph uh, about Chinese ontology using all the water and a fire as main agents here. The blue one every time is the location of the water. The red one is the location of the fire. These are different versions. And do not think this is esoteric. This is a very old scientific language. And they are very old scientific symbols which express some information about a situation, about uh, a current idea, or about... Um, a natural phenomena. Uh, the pity is a lot of esoterics use these graphs in order to impress people somehow, but they do not understand really. Uh, uh, we have to see that the Chinese culture is very old and still expanding. And we have to see that they have some uh, patterns of information and some illustrations of information which are conserving very deep-minded ideas. Here you see the same expression. On the left side, we have the signature somehow of water. On the right side, here is the signature of fire. And the famous uh, scholar Song Ying Ching described water and fire are direct expression of qi in the visible world. They have no exit form and are constantly scintillating between the state of qi and their own physical manifestation. Water is a full manifestation of qi. Fire is an empty manifestation at sea. The combination of both elements creates life. I remind spirit in water because spirit is regarded to fire and water is regarded to substance. Here we see the same in Taoist longevity techniques. It is the Nei Dan technique, inner elixir technique. We see the Nei Dan here and the Wai Dan. This is a co-factor uh, inside the technique. And here you see how uh, the adept, the Taoist adept, is uh, guided to bring fire and water together in an oven, in an internal bodily ov oven yeah, or heater. So they will combine and create or sustain life on process. Oh, what happened now? Okay. We also know <coughs> feng shui, this is uh, landscaping or uh, earth divination. Here water plays a very important role. 
The first mentioning of water is in the uh, book of graveyards. If she is riding the wind, this person will happen. If it is confining the water, still still will be the result. People of ancient time accumulated chi and doesn't provoke this person. They guided it to still stand. That is the reason the technique is called wind and water. This means accumulating water is good. Harsh torrent water is bad. Slow flowing water is benign. Here you see an uh, uh, illustration of different landscape uh, models where water is arranged in a certain way. And here you see the illustration of an ideal landscape for uh, ancestor worship and professional carrier. And here the guy you see is a, like the Brunnengeist. <laughs> this is the spirit of water <laughs> somehow, yeah, uh, engraved into the landscape. Also in medical ideas, water plays a role. The whole Chinese medicine is based on the idea of water flux. The, 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 the character zhi, which means to regulate, administrate, irrigate, treat, to medicate, zhi bing, yeah? To medicate is, uh, in fact, to... Uh, yeah, distribute water in rice fields. So we have the concept of fullness in Chinese medicine and emptiness. And we have a lot of therapeutic activities which are based on the idea of flowing water and also acupuncture expresses water points somehow. Here, Ben Sao Gagmu, this is Chinese pharmacology. Here we have different kinds of water belonging to heaven, earth, and uh, uh, human processed water. Very interesting for us, yes, I know. Very interesting for us is the idea of the chi science. I told you originally chi is vapor, it's a kind of vapor in the air, but in modern Chinese sciences, chi is called energy carrier, transporting life information or informational wave motion producing ordering effect. You see the journey from vapors over rice fields in the air to informational wave motion producing ordering effect is very, very long. Um, scientific approaches concerning water in the West, I distinguished evidence-based approach to disclose water signals by physical and chemical research. Okay, Ben Winston, Chaplin, Professor Pollack, for state of water. Water has these two unknown abilities, probably, for instance, a memory we like to get out of it. Euphoric approach by organization of water. Water is more mirroring the mental condition of a human being. This is the emoto approach. Water has to be worshipped, also emoto. Then commercial approach, production of drinkable water. Here we have to distinguish drinking water in order to survive and drinking order in order, water in order to improve. This is a different aspects and the mineral and water industry. Now, what are our usable results? If we are looking for a locus classicus, this means we are looking for some traces in Chinese culture similar to what we are doing right now. I would say negative and positive charges between earth and heaven. So we have a look for yin and yang duality between her earth and heaven. Coherence. We have a look for the sentence, the same chi is resonant to each other. Tong chi, xiang yi, in the book of Jesus, I Ching. Life is spirit in water. We have the same concept, water and fire, complementary in Taoist longevity techniques of the inner elixir. Water is containing vibrations, substance and function, paradigm in Taoist philosophy. The vacuum isn't empty. It's a very famous concept of emptiness in Qi by Zhang Tsai in Song Dynasty. Biological fields, water structure, crystal and life. So we have to follow the idea of Zhu Xi, a very famous philosopher of structure and chi, and water is containing life information, 
we have a concept out of Ming Dynasty, which is called the good knowledge inside natural phenomena. Okay, here I show you this short way. It was a hasty run through history, yeah, and some concepts, and um, uh, probably we have something which is not Western and which is not Chinese. So it's Japanese, yeah. It is the concept of kami, and this is now uh, a kind of interpretation from my glance to the subject water. A kami is anything that can fill us with wonder and awe that Motori Norinaga in the 19th century. Here we know we have to see that Japanese culture has a different glance to religious religion to believe somehow. And we have a population of 120 million people, but we have over 200 million members in religious societies in Japan. <laughs> How that can happen, this means they have, the, they have the idea to modify their believing. And in my point of view, the worship of water in the motor concept is a kind of Shintoist, has a taste of Shintoist ideas because water here probably is a kami, the kami missile. But last not least, the real problem of water is the shrinking resource of water on this planet. I got these two slides from the Texas Diesel Desalination Conference, and you see clearly we have for Africa probably water, a water volume like that, but you can't see the small point, which is the part of drinking water in this big, nice ball. And here, that shows us the whole volume of water on Earth. But the small point is the volume of water we can use to drink. So thank you for your attention. And I'm happy <laughs> we will step into this passion now.